how did you get well, involved? Fortunately for me, I had people who were in the news business. My, my Aunt Margaret and my Uncle Ray were at the Sunday Record. Oh, is that right? Right. And so I got started there doing high school work. Huh. And uh, I was fortunate to get in, opening the door that way. And then I went in with them on a regular basis. Right. Uh, it was a weekly newspaper out every Sunday until World War II came along. I visited the Eagle Tribune and we right. talked a little while. As a matter of fact, we're going to show some uh, photos in a few minutes on that. Mm -hmm. But um, we got to talking about what you had done at World War II and uh -huh. some of the stories that you covered. Uh, maybe you could go into that a little bit. Yeah, I was, a, uh, again, a public relations specialist, photojournalist in, 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 the, uh, mm -hmm. in the service. Yeah. Sometime, you know, in, in Hollywood on the desert when we had all the movie stars out there when we were training out there. and then. Uh, then I went overseas, I made the Okinawa invasion, and I get in with B-29s, and then I come back and went with the Gazette right after the war. Uh, I did the invasion of, of Okinawa, mm -hmm. and uh, the work I was doing with, and there, and once we got ashore, was things that had to go back for the intelligence work, where the airports and the ground facilities that were left. Because I was working, I was with the 7th Air Force then, and I went with the 20th Air Force, and we were in the B-29s. And our job then from the islands, the Marianas, was uh, to bomb Japan mm -hmm. and prepare for the invasion. Yeah. So yeah. I got to see a, a lot of the Pacific. And uh, the biggest story then turned out to be the atomic bomb, which flew from a field right next to ours. And I get in on that, wow. on that story when, uh, when they paraded the Enola Gay, the bomber that dropped the run, right. and Colonel Tibbetts and all the people on the crew. And I worked with uh, worked with that story, mm -hmm. and did the, uh, you know, took the, some of the photographs and right. taking the names and working with the uh, Life magazine and the Associated Press and New York Times, right. all those people on that story. Then I came home to the big story and get out. And you mentioned that there were quite a few Havelites that were involved in that as well. Uh, oh, by the way, Havel people everywhere I went. I mean, you know, uh, I made a point to look them up, and there were four of us right in that right in that area at the time, and one was in the atomic bomb crew was Ralph Daggett, and then there was Mark Maverfrides, Bobby Elms, myself, and we would, uh, our biggest adventure, of course, was in <laughs> the night VJ day when they, when the war ended, and we were out riding around to see all the celebration, there were so many bullets falling down from people shooting in the air, we went back into the, <laughs> into the <dugout. laughs> The big, the big, ending for that for me was when we flew over you know i was with the b-29s the big bombers uh -huh. and our last formation was when we flew over the missouri when macarthur and the japanese envoys were signing the surrender Can below you imagine? and then we flew on from there and we dropped prisoner of war supplies to the guys in the camps one on the main island uh in japan and the other one the uh the Northern Island of Hokkaido, and uh, how the guys waving up to us and getting yeah, the clothes yeah. and the medicine and the food that we dropped on them instead of the bombs. That was that was a high point of the whole war. Did for me. you think of it as a high point at that time, or or what? No, because was, I, I, you know, I'm curious to know. You know, being a part of history like that. Uh, how no, does, it, how was, it was a feel? thing we were glad to do and happy to do. But yeah. you know, you look back on it and see that was. That was really the high point when we ended, and the war ended. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were part of it. We were, our outfit helped to end the war, mm -hmm. you know, because they were waiting to make an invasion of Japan, and, and uh, Lord knows how many would have, how many would have been killed right. if that had happened. Yeah. Right. But that that then I came home and went back to work. So this is my best souvenir from the war. It's the pass I got when I got into the Pacific Ocean area, and it, it allowed me to go anywhere and do anything without interference, and nobody could censor anything I took except the people at my headquarters. Excellent. And I've saved it. I preserved it. This is, this is not the size it was, by the way. By the way, it's for ordinary wallet size. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, uh, I just had it enlarged and framed. So Great. that's the, the best souvenir I kept from, uh, from the war. I especially like this one because it showed what I did and what I did and how I did it during the war, and this one was on the island of Okinawa, 
shortly after the invasion while there was still battle going on in the other parts of the island. And I went in with a 7th Air Force unit, and the pictures went back to Yank Magazine, to papers in the States, and, and other things. But uh, I might point out, only photographers and field grade officers were allowed to carry sidearms. Yes. That's how I got a gun, because they, they figured you couldn't take pictures and carry a rifle, too. <laughs> so thank goodness I never had to shoot anybody or defend myself with it. <laughs> but I carried it, and somebody stole it when I got back to the States. This is the kind of plane I worked with in the training command. We used to pose all the pilots like this, so <laughs> send the pictures back to their hometown newspapers. Oh, so this was, nice. it was a hometowner, and uh, well, I put myself in it. Yeah. You know, right. And one of the other right. guys, why not, huh? <laughs> I still got it, obviously. I kept it for <laughs> all these years. A few reunions I go to is with the B-29 group, the 58th Bomb Wing. We're having a time together in Hartford later this year in August. All the people who were in the B-29s when the, uh, when the war ended, and that slogan was, wait till, the, wait till the 58th Wing gets there. And this was the type of plane that ended the war. Hmm. And, uh, you know, well, there were a couple of things, but I was going to say that I was down at the La Chateau in Groveland one night, still in uniform. Mm -hmm. The war had ended, and I was home on leave, and uh, a Marine came up to me, and I thought, well, this could be trouble. Then he shook hands with me. He says, if it wasn't for you guys, we'd have invaded Japan. <laughs>